The PM orders an alcohol ban at the Manus Asylum Centre. Illegal settlers warned to leave government's land. And number one super introduces new methods of tracking customers. This is National MTV News with Tokana Hasavi. A very good evening to you and welcome to Wednesday's news. It's good to have your company. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill has ordered an alcohol ban at the Manus Asylum Centre. This will also see regular alcohol and drug tests to be conducted on employees of the centre. Mr O'Neill made the call as the government awaits the report of the sexual assault of a local female employee by Australian personnel three weeks ago. The zero alcohol tolerance is effective as of today as the government wait for the investigation and report into the alleged rape incident. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill says alcohol was involved and has contributed to the alleged assault which may include the use of drugs. This will now see staff be subjected to alcohol and drug tests prior to work. O'Neill said any staff breaching this ban will be dismissed. He also called for strict controls by the chief migration officer. Last week, the prime minister maintained that the case will be seriously dealt with. They must respect the sovereignty of this country. They must respect our laws. They must respect our people. Uh, I will be discussing this after I receive the uh, report from our officials. I will take this matter up with the Australian government and uh, we will come to the bottom of this. The alcohol ban is no surprise for the people of Manus. MP Ronnie Knight described the processing centre as a small city within the Lorengau capital. Becoming a, uh, a mini Vatican city in, in Manus. We have a small compound of Australia in our own country and they seem to be doing what they want. Mr Knight has also called for the closure of the centre. You know, our people at the moment, they are very quiet, but uh, I think it's come to a state where all I know place only tightly lit. Jack Lapave, Jr., National MTV News. The Lands Department has sounded a stern warning to people who reside illegally on state land to voluntarily vacate the land. The department will start to reclaim state land for the expansion and development of towns and cities. Here in Port Moresby, Nine Mile residents near the cemetery area living on state land will be the first to be given eviction notices. People living on land posts 939 and 217 near the Nine Mile Cemetery are advised to vacate the land at their own will or will be the first ones to be evicted. These two portions are uh, situated uh, uh, in Nine Mile area or going towards uh, uh, Nine Mile uh, Cemetery area. Uh, it's called Tef Club. It's Tef Club now. It's other provinces, including PNG's industrial hub, Lei, will also undergo similar exercise. This move is aimed at reclaiming state land for the expansion of the city. Lands Minister Benny Allen has also appealed to residents living on state lands not to build permanent structures. Because uh, we will be, uh, if a developer comes in there or these two title holders come in there, uh, they are likely to evict them. The state owns an estimated 3% of the total land area in PNG, but with increasing demand for developments and expansion of towns and cities, the Lands Department is pushing to reclaim all vacant state lands. These people who are illegally occupying state land, they need to start to make attempts to move off that land because the state needs that land to provide uh, basic infrastructure and services for the people in the city as the city is growing. On several occasions, people reside illegally on state lands are claiming compensation from the state before being evicted. In Port Mosby, instances of people claiming to be landowners are selling state land to ordinary people. In that situation, the Lands Department says they are not responsible for any loss unless a formal title is given. Quinten Alomp, National MTV News. The Magisterial Services is working on a land reform legislation that is designed to better manage land disputes in rural communities. 
Following a review into the Land Court Regulation Forum held in Lei, the Magisterial Services is also reviewing land mediation processes. This will give birth to a Land Court Manual that will guide land mediators to manage land disputes. Adjustments will be made to the areas where the Land Registration Act overarches the Land Dispute Settlement Act. Deputy Chief Magistrate Mark Pupaka, in an interview with MTV, said the amended Land Dispute Settlement Act will include conflict management, a subsection that deals specifically with land disputes. And so we're preparing to handle it in the best way possible uh, through a combination of um, mediated uh, intervention and um, you know, court intervention. The Magisterial Services is a major partner in the government's National Land Development Program and its main focus is to settle land disputes. The Magisterial Services is now anticipating a focused collaboration with the Department of Justice and Attorney General. We anticipate that uh, the mediators will be parked within the structure of those district development authorities so that they have a place to operate out of so that they are sort of guided uh, in, in the mobilization they use, uh, in the way they work. To ensure the welfare of land mediators in district levels are taken care of. The Land Court Manual is expected to be tabled in Parliament in this September sitting, and once it is passed, it will be used in both district and provincial courts to manage land disputes in Papua New Guinea. Tekla Gunga, National MTV News. The contractor tasked with the Bumbu Barracks Police Housing Program that began in 2012 has not completed the project. The seven duplex remains half done. Police Minister Robert Atiafa says he is waiting for a report from the Police Commissioner to start an investigation. MTV's Bethany Harriman has more on this report. These pictures taken this morning, the seven duplex houses that were supposed to help with the chronic housing shortages that the lay police face remain incomplete. The project began initially at a cost of 2.5 million kina, but the cost will have increased since 2012 when the project began. Our skill is what is the government going to do to have a better police force to serve our people and investors like you here in Lai. Police Minister Robert Atiafo spoke about the ailing state of police infrastructure during the opening of the new Lay Metropolitan Building funded by the AFP through the PNG Australian Policing Partnership. Lay police men and women have the difficult task of policing PNG's fastest growing city despite living in squalid conditions, logistic problems and manpower shortages. They continue to provide an essential service. On the 3rd of January, Police Minister Robert Atiafa personally visited the Bumbu Police Barracks and the seven duplexes left incomplete for two years. And then he made calls for an investigation. Eight months on, the police minister says he's still waiting for a report from the police commissioner to initiate the investigations. Bethany Harriman, National MTV News, Lay. Ship owners are being warned not to operate unseaworthy vessels. The National Maritime Safety Authority has arrested several ship owners for doing that. NMSA Maritime Standards and Compliance Manager Joseph Piawan says this is a breach of the Merchant Shipping Act. The National Maritime Safety Authority, or NMSA, has noticed an increase in unseaworthy ships out at sea has been carrying out maritime operations to clamp down on these ships. Maritime Standards and Compliance Manager Joseph Piawan says owners of these ships will be arrested and charged if found to be sailing unseaworthy ships. Starting to charge them under the Merchant Saving Act and uh, people who regularly breach the Merchant Saving Act, we are charging them under the criminal court. NMSA has issued numerous warnings to ships under detention. However, their owners continue to ignore these warnings, endangering the lives of passengers and crews on board. Mr. Piawan says NMSA is concentrating its efforts in provinces that do not have maritime officers to monitor unseaworthy vessels. 
Also, NMSA is dealing with limited manpower, which is an inconvenience to their operations. It is hoping to work closely with provincial governments to facilitate the monitoring of ships operating in their areas. Mickey Cavera, National MTV News. And in more news ahead, coffee industry under threat. Also, earth moving machines for Mobile District and Number One Super launches tracking system. We'll give you the details of those stories and more when we come back. Stay tuned. Good to have you back with the news. The coffee industry is under threat of being wiped out from a beetle called the Coffee Cherry Borer. This was revealed today at the PNG Agriculture Stock Tech Forum by the Coffee Industry Corporation Acting CEO, Charles Dambui. The coffee industry contributes well over 500 million kina per year to the economy of Papua New Guinea. The Coffee Industry Corporation boss says that if the borer, which is a beetle, makes its way onto PNG soil, it has the potential to eradicate the coffee industry altogether, even before they could respond. The disease is the first happened to uh, uh, happened to uh, invade our our coffee industry. Uh, by the time we, we start mobilizing resources and all this, it will wipe out the industry. So it's very, very dangerous that we need to be on our toes. Yeah. The Coffee Industry Corporation currently has National Agricultural Quarantine Inspection Authority working with them to get information on how best to react if the disease entered the country. The coffee cherry borer is part of a subfamily of beetles that is listed to be the most damaging insect in the world. It lives and multiplies in the host plant, which makes it difficult to control. And that was developed in, 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 in conjunction with Nakia and then CIC and uh, in the customs as well. So when the outbreak comes in, uh, we'll execute the plan. Uh, we'll deploy some of our officers from CIC as well as Nakia and, uh, and the resource as well. Dumboi also stated that due to the lack of funding, the industry along with Nakia are unable to do in-depth research on how best to control the disease. Adelaide Siroxkari, National MTV News. A Western Islands District Development Authority has transported seven earth-moving machines from Ley to continue road maintenance in the district. For the last two years, the Mobile District Development Authority has spent over 8 million kina opening up roads previously inaccessible. The machines cost the district over 3 million kina in the last two years. Around 3 p.m. this afternoon, a supervised loading of the first of the seven excavators being loaded onto a highway truck to be transported up to the Mulbaya district. After two years of work carried out by machinery bought at the same dealer, the Mulbaya Development District Authority, led by local MP Koi Trape, is replacing the old ones. This lot will come with the same terms and conditions that include field service. Yes, uh, we're negotiating that as we speak right now. So hopefully we'll have that in place in the next week and um, those people will be up on site by the end of the month, early next month. Two machines were funded by the Western Highlands Provincial Government while five others were bought by the district. A total of over three million kina spent. It comes as the Western Highlands District continues to open up its road networks that include two highways to the Medang province and Enga province. Uh, basically, we got machines, uh, machines uh, in the district. They are doing a link up to hold the little places. Uh, those places that uh, they have never seen vehicles, they are seeing it right now as we speak. The, the machinery will make the trip up to the district tonight and will be received by the people later on Saturday. Bethany Hariman, National MTV News, Lay. PNG's largest super fund, Number One Super, has announced the launch of a new payment tracking system. Chief Executive Officer Gary Tunstall said the Benefit Payment SMS Alert Service is an innovation to establish effective communication between the members and the super fund. The management of Number One Super announced the launch of the SMS alert for benefit payments at a media conference this morning. 
CEO Mr. Tanstall explained that the new system will enable members to receive automated status updates about their exit payments via SMS. Uh, and the new service really allows uh, people in provincial towns and outlying areas to follow where their application is in the, uh, in the processing queue. Uh, the, uh, the new SMS uh, process that we've got allows a member to uh, lodge an application uh, through the branches and then to follow the application through the process. Number One Super is using this new system as a direct response to the growing demands of the Superfund's increasing membership. When we started off about 18 months ago, we, we noticed that most members were, repeat, uh, were doing repeated visits to uh, our branches, basically to follow up on application status. And also uh, at our call center, members were doing repeated calls and sending repeated emails to follow up on the status of uh, their applications. So this is basically responding to the demand from members. Number One Super currently has 38,000 members accessing its online and mobile services. The Super Fund manages the superannuation funds totaling 4.8 billion kina for over 150,000 members from both the private and public sectors. Number One Super will also be launching a new smartphone application where members will have easy access to their annual statements. The CEO also announced that the number one super head office will be moving to a new location in December. Deli Waigeno, National MTV News. Well, Alamotis has introduced two new products into the transport market. The products are a Yamaha Wave Runner and a Toyota LJ Cruiser, which are the latest version from Yamaha and Toyota that have arrived in the country. The Wave Runner has been customized and now weighs 21 kilograms, less than the previous models, while the LJ Cruiser is amongst the top five Toyota vehicles on demand. Both products were launched here in Port Moresby last night. And now we check out the finance news. The Kina closed unchanged at 0.3605 US dollars in the interbank market and at Bank South Pacific. Our Kina was trading at 0.3530 US dollars, 0.4756 Australian dollars. 0.3203 euro and 43.47 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold and copper closed the day lower while coffee and cocoa closed higher. Palm oil and crude oil closed lower while copper closed the day higher. And finally on the stock market the Dow Jones closed at 48 points higher, the ASX closed at 17 points higher and the All Ordinaries closed at 18 points higher as well. Funding limitations in the agriculture sector, also strengthening services in the autonomous region of Bougainville and PNG represented at ASEAN meeting. We'll bring you those stories coming up after this break. Thanks for your company and welcome back to National MTV News. Well, this year, funding for agriculture was relatively non-existent, reducing production and forcing commodity boards across the sector to fall back on leftover funds from 2014. The funding difficulties are affecting commodity boards and the government agencies, such as the Agriculture Quarantine and Inspection Authority and the National Agricultural Research Institute. These problems were highlighted today at PNG's Agriculture Sector Stock Tech Forum. Department of Agriculture and Livestock Secretary Dr. Vele Ilaba'a said the agriculture sector's 2 billion kina revenue comes from a mere 2% of the country's total cultivable land mass, presenting the staggering potential in the sector. The department is also aiming to secure consistent funding in order to monitor, research and uphold export quality. Manpower in the Bougainville Police Service will be strengthened to improve the law and justice sector, a critical area in the autonomous region aspirations for referendum. Bougainville's Acting Assistant Commissioner of Police, Paul Kamuai, says the pre-recruit education program is the way forward that will increase capacity and strength of the future police service. Forty young Bougainville men and women have recently graduated from a course that enables them to apply for recruit training at Bomana Police College. Bougainville President Chief John Momis in his keynote address thanked the national and Australian government for working in partnership with the autonomous Bougainville government 
supporting this program to increase police capacity. Discipline young, young men and women will become conscientious in, in, in enforcing the rule of law in Bougainville to create a free and a just society. Applicants who successfully complete six months recruit training at Bowana Police Training College will return to Bougainville. I'll come back to Bougainville and help my other police officers here in Bougainville to work together to make Bougainville a safer place for everyone to live in. Minister Councillor Rod Hilton of the Australian High Commission said the program designed to give young Bougainvillians the education needed to complete police recruit training represents partnership to achieve common objective of peace and stability. Vivian Hakelitz, National MTV News. Turning overseas, in Malaysia, foreign ministers from the 10-member Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, convened in Kuala Lumpur today. Papua New Guinea, which has observer status, was represented by Foreign Minister Rimming Pato. Speaking at the forum, Minister Pato urged leaders to collaborate in addressing illicit maritime activities and the impact of climate change on food security. Pato said PNG has been stepping up its international engagement recently to create business and trade opportunities. PNG was granted an observer status membership in 1976 and has applied for full membership since. However, PNG has yet to meet ASEAN's membership criteria. Well, we have True Guy Sports coming up next and we'll give you details on rugby league, soccer, AFL and weightlifting. Stay with us. Welcome to True Guy Sports. The SPP and Hunters will now focus on their Round 22 clash against the Inform Ipswich Jets after coming off a great victory against the East Tigers at the weekend. The Jets have named two Papua New Guineans in their lineup, Rod Griffin and Richard Pandia. The Jets currently sit third on the Intrust Super Cup points ladder and the Hunters will want to maintain their second spot at 35 points. In their last encounter, the Hunters were victorious 40 points to 28 in round 13. However, both sides will be desperate to keep their spot in the top four with the finals just around the corner. The Besta Cup, PNG's Amateur Football Championship, is set to attract teams from all across Papua New Guinea throughout the month of August. Beginning on the 11th, the Lay Football Grounds will most likely host the Momase Leg. The announcement made by the PNG Football Association a week ago signaled a step forward for the sport in the country in the wake of the success in the Pacific Games. And this year's tournament will be held in the more extreme locations of Papua New Guinea, with Kiunga in the western province and Manus in the north, as well as Mendi in the southern highlands. The 25th of August to the 29th. And I've been told that, yes, East New Britain, New Ireland, Kimbe, Bougainville, and New Britain Palm Oil are all attending. Member associations are still required to confirm all participating teams for the tournament, although Koima expects that the provinces will send squads. In the last season, months with the unknowns, they came and won the cup, and they're here to defend the title. So I've been told that the presidents are quite going very well. Uh, only last week they had our own tournament in selecting the best of cup reps and on home soil and, and the defending champions, uh, anything can happen. Koima, who also managed the PNG Games in 2014, will again be at the forefront. And when asked about the selection of players into franchise clubs in the National Soccer League, Koima states that the possibilities are there. Um, chances are that um, it's up to individual uh, not MAs, but centers, or would be businessmen who want to put him up a team. Uh, good time for them to go and uh, scout for players up to the championships. The Best of Cup provides an avenue to the outlying member affiliates and associations to expose and showcase never before seen talent. And with the under 20 Women's World Cup set to be hosted in the country in 2016, these also provide an opportunity for an acquaintance with higher standards of football. Jeremy Moggy, 
National, MTV Sports. The popularity of AFL has been growing in the country following the recent success of the PNG Mosquitoes in the 2014 International Cup. Port Moresby AFL's competition has 10 men's team and 4 women's teams. The competition hopes to include more women's teams in the near future. AFL PNG is also hopeful that the sport will be included in the 2019 Games in Tonga after not being included in the 2015 Pacific Games here in Port Moresby. The Pacific Games with the AFL into the Pacific Games, it's a, it's a big step. Um, we're looking forward to trying to get into the next Pacific Games, um, but it depends on the um, on how the criteria that uh, the sports found uh, yeah the sports foundation sports federation is going to uh, be running the show. So we we're, we're still holding talks with them, trying to make sure that we will try to get a team into the um, into the next games. Well, over the next couple of months, there will be tournaments happening in and around the country. Papua New Guinea weightlifters will also be competing in some of these scheduled events. MTV's Elijah Levet has more. PNG weightlifters will be competing in the Commonwealth Weightlifting Championships in October this year in India. They also will be taking part in the Oceania Weightlifting Championships next month. While they were competing in the Pacific Games, plans were already on the way for their preparations. Straight after their competition, some lifters were sent back to Noumea in New Caledonia to continue training. Wow, very deep squat. But she... Over to hockey, PNG will be attending the Oceania Cup in New Zealand in October. New Zealand has been crowned champions for three years in a row. The winner of this tournament will get an automatic entry into the Rio Olympics. The strongest contenders for the Oceania Cup will be Australia, New Zealand and Fiji. PNG finished third and fourth in 2013 but may have a good chance this year after their performance at the Pacific Games. Other tournaments happening in the country is the Touch Rugby National Championships, which kicks off next month in Kokopo, and the Netball National Championships in Alotau. Elijah Lavet, National MTV Sports. Well, True Guy Sports continues after the break with more sporting action. Stay with us. True Kai Sports. Good to have you back with True Guy Sports. With the aim of sparking interest in sports across the country, respective cards have embraced the concept of sports marketing. The initiative of adopting the concept is timely in lawn bowls with their success from the Pacific Games. Although the concept may be new to some codes, it falls in line with their respective development strategies. Over to Brazil to the Olympic Games. Rio de Janeiro's mayor, Eduardo Paes, is concerned about Brazil's ability to deliver the 2016 Olympic Games. Mayor Paes is concerned in light of Brazil's darkening political and economic climate, but he urged Olympic organizers to press on. With numerous venues yet to be completed, the biggest issues are decontaminating its bacteria-plagued waters and spending constraints. Well, that's how we wrap up True Guy Sports tonight. I'll give you all the weather details coming up after this break. Stay tuned for that. True Guy Sports. And now we take a look at the weather forecast for the next 12 hours in southern region. Fine weather expected in all centres. In Momase, fine and sunny expected in all centres as well. In the New Guinea Islands, mostly fine expected in Kavang and Kokopo. Fine weather in Loringa and Kimbe, while Buka to look forward to brief showers. And in the Highlands Regional Centres, morning fog, then fine weather. Looking at forecasts for small ships, but first there is a strong wind warning current for all coastal waters of Milan Bay Islands, including Cape Vogel to Finchhafen, through Fitia Strait, Siasi Islands, Dampier Strait to Long Island and the New Guinea Islands. Looking at waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Torres Strait, Daru to Kiwa Island, Karama, Yule Island through to Hood Point, Samara Island, 
to Cape Vogel, Finchhafen, Medang, through Topokia, Wewak, including all its islands, seas of 1.5 metres to 2.5 metres, waters of eastern and western Milne Islands, seas of 2 metres to 2.5 metres, waters of Finchhafen through to Fitia Strait, including Siasi Islands, Dampier Strait, Long Island, Manus and its western group of islands, seas of 2.5 metres to 3 metres, and lastly, waters west of Wewak to Aitape, Banimore and the northern PNG Indonesian border, seas of 0.5 metres to 1.3 metres. Now we take a look at ocean forecast for PNG areas. Coral Sea sees moderate with southeast winds at 15 to 20 knots. Solomon Sea sees moderate to rather rough with southeast winds at 15 to 25 knots. Bismarck Sea sees moderate to rough with southeast winds at 20 to 34 knots. And finally, Pacific Ocean sees slight to moderate with southeast winds at 10 to 20 knots. Now recapping our top stories again tonight before we go, the Prime Minister orders an alcohol ban at the Manus Asylum Centre. Also, illegal settlers warned to leave government's land and Number One Super introduces new methods of tracking its customers. Well, that's been the Bulletin this Wednesday from the entire news crew. I'm Tokana Asavi Jr. Thanks heaps for your company. You take care and stay safe. Good night.